welcome to Musical Mondays. Everybody, I'm waiting for our special guest to join, Tony Lee. Hello, thanks for joining. And I'm playing a little Asian Persuasion All-Stars. One of the bands that Tony's in. There's Tony. Hello, Tony, I see you there. So you can send me your request to join the live stream now. some technical issues. Hello, Noreen Broan, thanks for joining. So Tony, you should see, hello, Taylor Campbell. Tony, you should see, um, I have a different, I have a different view here. We should have tested this. <laughs> um, uh, you should see something on your screen that, let's see, let's see if I can invite you. Here, I'll invite you to join. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Tony. There you are. So, hey, Pill Squad Band. Hey, Noreen. Uh, hey, everybody's trying to help. Tony, did you get my request to join? <laughs> uh, Denise is saying if you scroll to the top of the comments, Tony, on your screen, or, you know, you might be on your phone, you should see something that says request to join. get this figured out. So on your Instagram, are you using your phone? Tony Lee is unable to join. No, don't say that. Hmm. Hello, Chris Clute. Thanks for joining. Okay. And Tony, are you seeing when you scroll to the top of the comments as Denise suggested are you seeing um are you seeing somewhere where you can uh request to join sorry I, i'm gonna stop multitasking let's see if i can get tony oh there we go you request go live with tony lee <gasps> okay well i accept your request to join. Oh, here he comes. Yay! Tony! Do we have some I have to use my phone, which I would rather, which I would rather not do, but there you go. Yay, you're here. Well, welcome. Where, <laughs> Thank where am you. I even listening? What's huh. that? Hello. Can you hear me? Sort of. <laughs> okay, here. I'll turn up my volume. Um, you know, it, I love it. It was a total group think helping you get on to the live stream tonight. Thanks, everybody who's uh, who was tuning in to doing that. Uh, let's see. Noreen says I'm frozen. So hopefully I'm not <laughs> anymore. But let me know if you're at... Oh, Tony's now going to pretend he's frozen. Um, 
if you're seeing and hearing us, please give us a heart. They're hearing and seeing us. Uh, amazing. Thank you. Yay, Tony. How are you? Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Oh, great. Yay. I was saying, when is Kelly going to call and we'll test out how this connection works? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Sorry to, to, to get you to wing it there. Quite all right. Oh. I'm a desktop computer person like the last one. So there you go. Okay. How are you? How are you doing? It's great to see you. What's that? Huh? How are you doing? It's great to see you. Great to see you too. I'm doing well. Yeah, doing pretty good. You know, doing music as much as I can. Doing the live stream weekly. I'm and bringing uh, this microphone in for no reason. It's totally a prompt. Hello. Well, that's, that's good. Oh, hey, I could bring my microphone in. Um, I don't know if you could, uh, you could tell off the top, but I was, uh, I was playing the video I did see that, Adam. Thank you. racist friend. So, you know, Tony, when I advertised this live stream on my socials, I, I told people that, uh, uh, in the posts that, uh, you are a beat maker, uh, drummer, percussionist, and you're playing more instruments than drums these days. So tell us a little bit about you i think and, you, you know, the, i think you kind of oversold the whole bit about uh the beat maker and stuff like that. <laughs> i didn't but, uh, not. so I, uh, tons I played, of fun and he's very humble uh yeah i play the drums and then uh i uh i i just i just got some what's called compact conga so i'm trying to play the conga drums now so cool and uh, i make my i make my garage rock videos where i play all the instruments pretty pretty badly i think so there's uh, there's guitar and bass and uh, and uh, keyboards and cool. and, uh, and, and uh, singing and uh, yeah that's what I know I and I uh, I make uh, I make songs at the computer sort of and then whenever I do that I do I, I send the demo in and the guitar say what and then they they figure it out properly so that's good so God bless the guitarists yeah. there. Hey. Where can people see your garage rock videos? Oh, either on on, uh, on Facebook or on my Instagram, which is uh, at Tony the Unofficial. So they've uh, they come during the pandemic. I would do them every day, and then I think I'm I might be in my fourth or fifth slump of doing those, but uh, I do them sometimes. My uh, my friend Elspeth Robinson always requests things, so. That gets me down there. Sometimes okay. it's down in the garage. I have to go outside and unlock the door and stuff like that and bring my tripod and my ring light. So I'm very, uh, very lazy with that sometimes. But when I did do requests, there are lots of wipeout. There's lots of uh, drum solos that I couldn't play, Inagata DeVita, Ginger Baker, and stuff like that. But uh, did, it's, it's good fun. You did Inagata DeVita? Not well. Actually, for the first for the first one. year, it was just me on the drums and singing, and then I started adding other instruments, which is fun, but also it's quite time consuming. So yeah, that sure. might that might uh, that might uh, that might contribute to the slumps. But there's uh, yeah, you, there's some good ones on there. You did a bunch of um, hey uh, Nora just joined. Hey Nora, um, you did a bunch of. Uh, videos like that during the pandemic i know you did one with me and the rest of the band um yes. where you, we played a, we, i think it was compassion studied, uh, we studied internet latency i don't think anyone figured out a good way to play together live on youtube no no we didn't no, we didn't that's pretty cool but we, yeah that's we did fun. a compassion machine with some uh, yeah Supreme and then Tony Supreme Battle like kind of drums. and then with the bad thing that happened was aaron prairie you couldn't see his face, and that's the only reason anyone would turn in is to see a tune in to Aaron Curry's <laughs> face. So. That is not the truth. Hi, Aaron. We love you. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and Tony, tell us about the other bands that you play with. Um, uh, let's see. I played in uh, in the Soreheads in high school in 1985, and from that band is Ron Yamaguchi, a.k.a. Ron Kenji, who plays in our band and also plays in Asian Persuasion All Stars, and then uh, we have a band called The New Black, which yes. is uh, a bunch 
bunch of uh, old stalwarts, Gary Economy from The Gathering and Gord Bedanik from Cobra 3 and David Lee Smith and uh, Christy, Christy Farr, who runs the East Vanity Parlor Salon. But that band hasn't got together in a while. Uh, we do Eddie D and the Sex Bombs with a bunch of uh, all-star seniors. We are going to uh, we are going to be back, I think, Labor Day weekend. We're playing a show at the Container Brewing. That's fun. I, I play at the uh, Hard Rock Miners Sing Along, which is an institution every, every second Wednesday at the uh, so second Wednesday of the month at the Princeton Pub. I do I do uh, tambourine and interpretive dance and comic relief. And what else we do? Uh, we play with Sparky Spur, but she's too busy uh, acting in the background of Hallmark films to have a gig, so we haven't done that in a while. That's and uh, I've, worn I'm a, a, I've worn a Sparky Spur T-shirt on my live stream one night. She's great. Did you design? I should have worn my that T-shirt. I didn't. Okay. I designed a I designed a cartoon business card for her. I might have it here. Oh, here it is. So for those of you who don't know Tony, he's also a designer. Dave Sparky Spur. That's cool. Thanks your usual facial expression. Oh, oh um, I'm doing a, I'm going to be doing a few dates with uh, Catherine Sutherland, a.k.a. Uh, Blue Dirt Girl, coming up soon. So oh, great. That's fun. There's, there's, um, there's uh, like a farmer's market by the city hall, and there might be a house concert, and very possibly the Kitsilano Showboat, which I have always wanted to play. So... That's coming up April, May, June. So, uh, Catherine Sutherland, Blue Dirt Girl. Awesome. And uh, Albert Classen on bass and uh, Bailey Adams on saxophone. That's fun. We had our first rehearsal in a while, and I actually remembered some of what we used to do. So, oh, fun. That's amazing. Tony, is there any band in Vancouver you don't play with? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Nickelback is at the Juno State. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Actually, lots of bands I'm in are on hiatus right now, including ours. So there haven't been that that true. many gigs. So it's true, it's true. Well, I hope I hope to play the Kitsilano Showboat one day yeah. too, maybe this summer. So that'd be cool. I'll keep you posted. I think applications have to come in soon. If oh you oh you're you're good at applying for stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, I've applied. So all good. God, someone knows what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know about that. So we've got some, I think we've got some of your bandmates in the room, in the room too. Oh. I think I saw Noreen Braun. Oh, uh, I yeah, saw yeah, no, Noreen. Uh, yes, Pill Squad. Oh, we did a, did a, I sang, I sang a Lou Reed song with a Pill Squad uh, on Lou Reed night a couple weeks ago, or a week ago. That was oh, fun. Yeah. And then I sat in for some drums so with on drums, so Scott Beetle didn't have to play like eighty songs. So that was fun. Played with uh, Eddie Dutchman and the, the Lulus, and uh, Finn uh, Finn Leahy, the the son of uh, Polly Paul Leahy. Oh yeah, from No right. Fun. Yeah. And I and I did some songs with Aaron Troy, and uh, and then uh, some of them, a bunch of people came up on stage to sing White Light White Heat, and there was a big dance party free for all. Super fun. Amazing. Amazing, yeah. I saw some of the video of you playing with uh, with Aaron. That was that was really fun. What a natural he is. Yeah. Well, so are you. No one gets distortion from an acoustic guitar like Aaron. I know. Oh, I know it's true. I miss playing with you guys. Yeah, yeah. We got to get back to doing that. Do you? Uh, so you, do you do you come back here for work ever? Uh, uh, here being back once in a while. Not. I haven't been back since December of 2021 20, so that's quite a okay. while ago yeah but, uh, but have you you've been playing here and there over on the island I, I think a little bit yeah yeah i'll probably be doing more this summer be getting out this summer and doing some stuff well you you talk to my people and i'm i'm totally in i'll talk to your people yeah um you know you posted something uh you you made a post about musical Mondays and and coming on as a guest. So thank you for doing that. And you said something uh, in your post uh, about the the All Star Choir. Yeah. Tell me more. It's okay. not that it's not that spicy, Kelly. But okay. Kelly has this uh, amazing song called "See in Me." There's a, a regular version and there's like a Jesse Waltman in that mix, which is excellent as well. 
So she brought in all these fantastic singers, uh, Shelley Preston and Bo Wheeler and Lisa Patel, Jenny Beach and uh, Brent Cross and uh, Aaron and Ron. And there's a few other stalwarts, but everyone was an excellent singer. So I thought, well, I'm not joining that. And then Bo Wheeler said, come on in, come on in and join. And I tried to like not sing very loud. I'm a loud person, but I, I'm not a projecting singing person. But Sheldon, our wife, Wonderful Sheldon Zaharko, producer, Juno nominated producer. I think he picked out a voice. That, who's that low voice? And, he's, <laughs> and he, I, don't, I don't remember specifically how he mentioned that I should not sing it anymore. <laughs> I thought he just had um, you stand back. Was, Were you like, possibly. like so I think I think maybe in one of the early verses I'm singing. Not not the guitar. The singing uh, is fantastic. But uh, so by instant not to join the group of all-star singers was correct i think so i so then the, the the last the next couple of days i took a video of it which i i should uh I'll, i think you posted that one before but i'm a, i'm a pretty i'm a pretty iffy singer i could hit the note at least 40 percent of the time i think so and also i'm i can i can sing whatever harmony someone else is singing but as far as uh, coming up with my own harmony in between two other people's harmony not very good at that so there you go. You know, I think uh, not not as spicy and controversial as I thought. Hello, Mr. Odzo and IG Barry. Thanks for joining. Um, you know, I think it was uh, the, probably the baritone. The baritone that stood out. Yep. Amongst all those Instead other voices. Tony Soprano, it's Tony Baritone. <laughs> Have you like got any new... Um, I post also posted a picture of you with your stack of snare drums that you brought yes. to the studio when we did the recording for my last album, uh, and uh, somebody commented on the on your snares. That um, so, uh, do you have any new snares? Any new gear that you um, can tell us about? There's always new snares. I was looking at that stack, and most of them I don't have anymore. They got traded in for other snares. Okay. Um, what have I got? I, I got a. Two years ago, I got a, a new Ludwig set uh, in Burgundy Pearl, and I got a I got a, a shallow drum, a piccolo drum, in a bigger one. But uh, it's mostly Ludwig's. I got a really nice old wooden one from the 50s, and a metal one from the 60s, and a Black Beauty from the 70s. And it's all very boring. So uh, yeah, snare drums. I'll talk about that all day. So why do you? Uh, I have two questions about that. So first question is, why do you pick? out certain snare drums what are you looking for well um usually there's two things the shallowness is higher pitched and uh, the uh the deeper ones are lower pitched okay and then there's metal the old metal versus wood so metal is ringier and pingier if you think of like uh high pitch like the funky drummer james brown sort of a clanky and or um a very a very high-pitched snare drum sound would be the era of the spin doctors. If you think of the two princes, it's sort of clanky. Oh. Okay. Whereas in the 70s, drums are sort of like a buddy, so like on an Eagles record or something. Like that. So generally, when we do when we do a slower song, you want a lower note and faster pitch. You use a higher note, like on on Sturgeon Love or something like that. But that's you know rules are rules are not really rules. So whatever whatever sits in the mix, so it's uh, for recording, not that I know anything. Some songs you want, uh, you want the snare to be up front and more bowdy, 70s type things, you want it to be softer. And people put moon gels or drum heads or, or, or just tape, tape up drums. I think, uh, I think Sheldon has his handy chamois, chamois oh, cloth yeah. that he clips onto the drum to make That's it sort right. of softer. I so if you do that. like a, uh, like a ballad, something slow, then you probably it's probably not a very drummy song, but it depends. Okay. I know a few things, and Sheldon knows like a billion things. Yeah. And there oh, you go. Sure. So, you, so when we did the, you bring on, you bring in all those snares, and you wind up using hardly any of okay. them. So it's it's more just so when we things you have to carry in from the car. <laughs> when we did the recording, um, did you? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Did Sheldon kind of give you any? Any uh, suggestions or direction on tone or, or pitch 
of the snares in certain songs? He'll, uh, I, will, I will bring up whatever I have and he'll say, oh, let's try this or let's try that. There's okay. a nice, uh, there's a nice aluminum uh, George Way snare drum they had at uh, at warehouse. And we used that, and I rented drums. And yeah, this he has his suggestions, and he did come in right in and clip clip the chamois cloth to the drum to give it that dead sound. The dead sound, no one really liked it. In, they liked it in the '70s, and now they like it again. So right. it's all very cyclical and fashiony, I think, as to what uh, sounds come back in. You know. So to help those who are listening, um, picture it. So the chamois cloth is a, it's, what is it? It's like a, it's almost like a felt, right? The chamois is actually, I think it's actually made out of uh, some sort of, I think it might actually be an animal hide. Like, so, uh, um, but it's, you, you get it to, you buy it at Canadian Tire to polish your okay. cars, I think. So. Oh, okay, I wonder. And did he put it right on the drum head? Yeah, he just puts it on top of the drum to sort of okay. deaden it. And so you hit that. Thwop, thwop. So instead of going clank, it goes like a goosh, okay. kind of gushy sort of sound. The, um, the sound is sometimes described as a baseball bat in a birthday cake, I think it's called, for that low sort of a sound. So. And on a video, someone actually tried it, and it didn't sound that good, but it was pretty funny. Okay. And then my second question um, was, uh, is uh, what's a piccolo drum? For a piccolo drum is... Is a it's a snare. A snare is usually about 14 inches uh, uh, deep or uh, in diameter. So anything less than four or three inches is a piccolo drum. Okay. Occasionally, there's a drum called a pancake drum, and it's just uh, high pitched and uh, yeah, it's a uh, pingy, clanky. Uh, sometimes those high pitched ones are called popcorn snares for for semi obvious reasons. So I don't we. I don't, for the music we do, I think singer songwriter music, although you, I see you're, you're a synthwave artist. So that's. Yes. <laughs> I but, have um, to the synthwave. Synthwave, you wouldn't even use a real drum anyway. But right. I think uh, generally singer songwriter music is sort of spare and airy. So, so you try not to take up too much space. So I think the lower pitch then maybe lower in the mix is kind of a, is the way. But, right. But that could right. change. Always a. Uh, something different because we did like a we did a hip-hop hip-hop drum on uh vanishing of bees but we didn't use the the high pitch one so it was like a low drum played hip-hop stuff so that's kind of a, a a convergence of styles yes yeah so tell people you mentioned vanishing of bees tell people a little bit about your process for um coming up with the beat for that song. well if, if i remember correctly i think you took you took, was it your niece to go see Childish Gambino? Oh, yeah. Is that the story? Donald You're Glover right. yep. hyphen it entertainer. So it's the uh, Feels Like Summer, I think, was the song that you brought in. That's right. And then we listened to that, and that was your, that was your inspiration. Right. And then it wound up sounding, sounding nothing like that. So it's just adapting a hip-hop beat to the song that you have already. So I think it was kind of a, a similar tempo. It wasn't a, yeah. it's like, well... How do we? Uh, how do I play hip hop beat with this song? And how do we match it up, up with uh, with sign of a folky? Well, it's a uh, folky. I don't know I'll, I'll ha totally how to describe it, but it's a. It's a yeah. It's a folk rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah folk rock. I folk guess we get into like, like chamber undertone. pop. I don't know what chamber. I don't think we have any cellos, but I think sometimes it gets into that sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thanks for, re thanks for reminding me of that. That's right. I Anything you forget about yourself, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'd forgotten I'd see, I went to that concert just before we started working on those songs. So that's, back, that's, that's back in the concert days. Have you been, to, have you been to see anyone play live since? Uh, not since, well, actually that's not true. I was, I've been to one, live concert here in Victoria at Vinyl Envy. Um, I went to see Sale Cassidy, who's a mm. fantastic singer-songwriter from Victoria that I love. So, yeah. But I haven't been Fantastic singer-songwriters. They're everywhere. Yeah, they are. They really are. I'm gonna, yeah. And I'm going to go, see, uh, I'm gonna go see Always on uh, Friday, which is uh, the dream, dream pop shoegaze 
Molly Rankin, the uh, daughter of one of the Rankin family. That's but they have this fantastic uh, noisy pop band playing on Friday. So Cool. Where's that show? At the old Com Commodore, two nights at the Commodore. Nice. St. Patrick's Day. I don't know if that's going to make it more drunken than the <laughs> Thursday show or not. It might. It might. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a great show. You know, I try and keep these uh, um, live streams just under thirty minutes because the the Instagram Instagram app is more friendly with me trying to save the video of that. So I wanted to invite everybody who's on the live stream tonight to check out some of the groups Tony mentioned. So the Asian Persuasion All-Stars, the New Black, I'm gonna forget them all. Uh, we got Check. Uh, Eddie D and the Sex Bombs. Thank you. Is the Hard Rock Miners Sing Along on Facebook. Uh, Asian Persuasion All-Stars is our, our uh, anti-racist super group. So Asian Persuasion All-Stars.bandcamp.com and all, all proceeds, and there's been like $300, although mostly mostly selling patches, which is weird. Um, that all goes to uh, to benefit Eliminate Hate, which is like a, the advocacy arm of the Vancouver Asian Film Festival. So they have some good anti-racist anti initiatives going there. Yes, and you can, yeah, so did you give the URL? AsianPersuasionAllStars.com? Dot, uh, band, bandcamp.com. Dot, dot com. Bandcamp. And then, Thank of you. course, KellyFlemingBandcamp.com. <laughs> Yes. yes, but and you can also check out Tony's Garage Rock videos on uh, Instagram and Facebook, I think. Instagram at, at, uh, at Tony Lee unofficial. Yeah. Oh. If you're Yay. super bored. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Tony. It's so great to see you. I great miss to see you. you. I let's, can't wait. let's meet in person you. one day. I know. And, I can't uh, play in, wait play to in see your you. band. I should be in Vancouver in May or June, so I will give you lots of warning as to when that happens. Well, who's up here? Hello, Jeff Coates. Hello, oh, yeah, Barry. Jeff Barry. Coates. Barry, the poker player. Wow. Pill Squad. Nora. Tamla. Noreen. Okay. I'm taking over your Instagram. That's okay. Thanks. Uh, great to see you, and hello, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for joining everybody. And thanks so much, Tony, for doing this. It's super fun. Have me back when you run out of other guests. I'll have you back anytime. Yay. And we could get you to sing. Sure. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Tony. Take care. And you'll, you'll see this on my, uh, I'll be posting it on my, on my Instagram after the show. Thanks, Kelly. Okay. Now off to the after party. Snacks. Yes. Okay, see you in the green room. <laughs> Thanks right. a lot. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Great to see you. Bye.